My name is Andrea Antoinette Jones. I am a pregnant African-American woman. They tortured me pregnant for 11 months in the Montgomery County Jail, pregnant with this baby for protecting myself. And I'm not leaving this location until I tell how y'all are setting me up from this location. And it's a prostitute walking down the street and I need to hurry and tell y'all how they are setting me up from this location. So this is the Palace Inn. And they cut the video off and tried to stop me from being, at, they erased the whole damn video of me telling y'all how they were setting me up. Made me have to re-record, stop the storage to where I can only record up to 20 minutes, making me have to talk fast to tell y'all this information. And I'm not leaving this location. My phone is on 50% and I am not leaving this location until I tell y'all exactly what they did from this location and what's going on and how they are setting me up for Cynthia that threatened to rape my child and for Austin that threatened to rape my child. So I'm in Houston, Texas. This hotel is where the woman that I met on the way back from Atlanta, at the Palace Inn, she, I left from this location and I came here to the, the Philip 66 gas station here um, today at around 12 noon. We left 1 p.m. I was at this station and I sat outside this station on the ground. And yeah, that's ridiculous. And it's a baby. And it's moving, it's alive, and everybody that can see on my channel can see that it's alive. So let's stop with the bullshit. I am pregnant. So I sat down right here, pregnant by Austin, for 36 months. And I called CPS on Cynthia Overa. And I told them that she threatened to rape my child while I was in this jail with Austin and Joseph. And I made the CPS report. And I'll go into more details about that. I got the confirmation number and told them that they're going to try to have the Ku Klux Klan and judges and police covering for Cynthia and Austin threatening to do this. And my phone was dying. By the time I got off the phone with CPS, my phone was only on 1%. And the man bullet that the woman was talking talking to here um, had, she, she said she knew the man um, here in Texas and met him here. He was not staying in the room, but she allowed him in the room and he wanted me to take his number and I'm, this is going to be part two of this information and part one I have all of the information and you need to watch it because they threatened to rape a child and you need to know who's setting me up now in Texas while I'm trying to get my child. So um, I'm out here with a damn duffel bag where them trying to set me up my own damn fucking family and I want you to take a real close look at my body yeah that's what trifling black women that's how they feel about each other so I'll go on about the details and get into that later so the one the man bullet had told me to take his number because the woman was leaving to go to New Orleans and he said if I needed anything to call him. So I knew that I was sitting up here with them threatening to rape my child, having me pregnant with a baby for 36 months, denying me medical care, lying and saying that I am not pregnant, tried to murder the baby for 11 months knowing that I was pregnant while they was threatening to rape my child, while they was doing this to me and this baby. And I sat outside and I told the CPS and they already know. Everybody in the country knows that they threaten to rape that little boy that belongs to me, and they know it. So I just reported it like a good mother is supposed to, and I called the man Bullet because I asked him to come and get me because I knew that I did not need to be out here like this pregnant by myself and what was the point in me, me taking your number and I told him when he asked me to get the number if the lady would be cool with it and they both tried to come on to me and I did not have sex with these people but I did take his number because he said he wasn't trying to hit on me at this point that if I needed him that he said that people from New Orleans treated everybody like family and that he's in Houston and he would look out for me so I called the man with my phone on one percent I said hey bullet this is Adrian's friend from the hotel you gave me your number can you come and get me from the Phillips 66 and he said when I said is this bullet he said yeah and when I asked him and told 
told him who I was to come and get me, like he said he would help me. The man said, oh, I don't got pills, I don't got bars. And I said, why are you saying anything? And I mentioned this in the video that they erased. They just, as soon as I recorded the video, they erased it out of my phone and then tried to have me, I guess, leave this location being set up like this without people knowing how I got set up this way straight into Houston off of the Greyhound. This is how they got black people out here setting me up pregnant for white people with a case that's worth millions of dollars and they got my people setting me up out here when I need a goddamn lawyer. So um, first of all, the man said, I don't got bars and I don't got pills. I don't take bars and I don't take pills. So I said, why are you saying anything about bars and pills? I said, I didn't ask you anything about bars or pills. And they erased the video that had this information and made me have to record half a video with half of the information, sit here and have to load that and then have to turn around and continue to tell y'all what's going on and then have to sit here and load it before I leave because I'm not leaving this location without people knowing on how y'all are setting me up because I don't know what you're going to try to do to me and this child when I move from this area. And it's always the people who was last in contact with the victim, even strangers. If somebody come and pick up a child and rape a child just because the child didn't know the person don't mean they didn't do it. And just because I didn't know this woman coming into Houston or know this man don't mean that they didn't do what it is that they did and they set me up over here by this and that. And I told that and they erased the video. So I'm going to go ahead and tell all the information before I leave this location because of what y'all are trying to do. And in America, to me, and I am pregnant by Austin, and I have been carrying this baby for 36 months, and it is alive, and you did threaten to rape my son while you was trying to murder me and this baby in this jail, and my sister, everybody know about it, so I'm not going to go into details about that. So the man... um bullet tried to say something about pills and drugs and I said I didn't ask you about no pills or no drugs why are you saying anything to me about pills and drugs and I was upset because my phone was only on one percent so I'm like what the hell is you talking about come and get me before my phone died because I didn't have I didn't know the area I didn't know where I was at she told me we was off a of beach nut when I asked her where the motel was and so the man had hung up the phone on me when I said I didn't ask you anything about bars or pills come and get me and he hung up the phone and hurried up and texted me and said don't call back and at that point, my phone died, and so I was thinking, I was like, okay, I need to get to Montgomery, Texas. God told me I'm right here with my duffel bag, and I want my son. And God told me when they were setting me up like this outside, they've been setting me up like this since I was released from the jail, had my own apartment, and this white man was attacking me and my child, and I'm pregnant by him, yeah, but they trying to murder me because I'm black. They trying to murder my baby because of my bloodline. They threatened to rape my child because of my bloodline, and this is how America gonna try to set me up outside. So I want to go on ahead and just go into the details. So the man bullet hung up the phone and my phone died. And I was like, well, God told me to come out here and go to the woman's home that threatened to rape, molest my son and rape my child because she's going through the courts. She's going through police that threatened to rape him. She's going through CPS people that threatened to, that threatened to rape him. She's going through all these racist people. It's a lot of people that's involved with this racism and with the Ku Klux Klan that are working in all of the offices in the courts that are helping see the cover that she threatened to rape my child. So I needed to report it to CPS because I, in my spirit, even though I know they're going to try to cover for her, and they've been doing it the whole time when they were trying to murder me pregnant in the jail lying and saying I wasn't pregnant. They had CPS trying to make it seem like that I had been convicted and I never was convicted of anything. And they, they were trying to lie and have the CPS set me up and with the police to be murdered and say that I had been convicted and allow her to keep my son and threaten to rape my child. And I told CPS that I had not been convicted and I did not appreciate them lying and saying that I had been convicted because I've never been convicted of any crime. So they were ready to lie for these people and say that I was convicted when they were trying to murder me and then lie on paperwork and say that I had been convicted and I had not been convicted. They had me trying to murder me pregnant in a cell and the CPS people know about it. So I called CPS from here and I told them that I was not convicted and that I had been incarcerated for protecting myself from Austin and that he came into my home attacking me and my child after he got out of prison and that the police were called and that I protected myself and I gave them Inger Chandler's number who was my 
lawyer to give them this information that Cynthia had no right to go and steal documents out of my home while I was incarcerated for protecting myself, then go into a courtroom and lie about my well-being as a mother and not tell the truth that I was pregnant in the jail and abused by her son and shot him in self-defense and lied. So by this point, my phone was dead and I knew that Cynthia and them had said while I was at the room, um, the woman had tried to get me to come to New Orleans and said that, oh, you pregnant, I don't, I, it don't sit right in my heart to leave you outside pregnant. I told her they threatened to molest my baby. I told her that my baby daddy was white. I told her everything and I told her they were denying that I was pregnant. And then the woman said that she knew that I was and that she wanted me to come to New Orleans and live with her so that they wouldn't do me like that out here in Texas. But that's luring me from where God told me to come. God told me to come right back here to where they ran me from this city pregnant, trying to murder my baby and threaten to molest my child and not to allow this woman to lure me to New Orleans out of another state. They had just tried to shoot and kill me in Atlanta, Georgia, where I had tried to get in the shelter. They had a black man come and attempt to murder me. And God said, no, when it gets to that point where they threaten to rape your child and then they got people trying to murder you from state to state for this, you need to be as close to him as possible. You need to come to her home. And then uh, when I said, told the woman that I would not go to New Orleans with her and that I would have documents about my ID sent to my sister's home. I don't have any identification out here. They stole my ID, debit cards, social security through uh, black men uh, that were, that they had trying to pretend would help me and they didn't and they stole my documents for these white people to try to say that I'm a bum on the streets. And I'm Melbourne's biological mother who shot a gun, protected him, was tortured with his sibling in my body for 10 months, for 11 months with them threatening to rape him, putting out this information for the past year on this YouTube platform with hundreds of thousands of views on this channel and I'm in, to, I'm in town and you threaten to rape my child. I'm back because they ran me from the state and God has uh, made me uh, brave to come back to the state but he told me to release all the evidence before I came back. So I would not leave Atlanta until I released all the evidence and they gave me hell trying to murder me pregnant in Atlanta for releasing the evidence for them because the whole United States is trying to cover up that she threatened to molest my baby with men that was from California, with men uh, that were racist with the police department. Cynthia threatened to allow a lot of racist people in this country to molest my child because I shot a white man. That's what she claimed. So let me just hurry and go into the details because they all, they tapped my phone to where they only letting me record 20 many videos now. And so... I said to myself, sitting here at this Philip 66, I said, well, Cynthia, now uh, when I said that I was not going to New Orleans with this woman and that I wasn't going to allow her to hurt, to stop me on my way here to get my baby and then stop me from getting there and lure me out right back out of the state to New Orleans. They threatened to rape my baby here. You ain't dragging me to New Orleans. And then they got the only person that knows that I'm pregnant fleeing from me and going to New Orleans and trying to drag me out of the state where they threaten to rape my child. This is where it happened. This is where it has to go down. This is where they have to give him back. This is where they have to help me and give me medical care for this baby, period. And this is where they have to be sued about my apartment. He put 15 different holes all over my home. And they're giving women that's lying to FEMA, saying their roof got turned, uh, tore off in Ida, a hotel, but you're going to leave pregnant. Andrea outside. And so when I said I would not go to New Orleans with her, then they hurried up and had somebody text, send me a notification on my YouTube saying that Cynthia had a restraining order, saying that I could not come near her home where she threatened to allow them to engage in sexual activities with my child, doing witchcraft while I was incarcerated. And Cynthia said that she, when she was doing the witchcraft, that she thought that she would have me murdered, pregnant with the baby, and Jesus Christ came in the cell and stopped them from murdering me. So in this 
this baby in me. So now I'm out and Cynthia thought that they would murder me after she threatened to molest my child. And I'm still alive and I know what you threatened to do to my baby. And you know that I know what you threatened to do to my child. Austin knows and I'm not dead and it's not going away. And you're not going to be able to have people keep setting me up outside with a bag because you're white and you threatened to molest my baby and because I'm pregnant by him and these Klansmen denied me medical care. And while I haven't given birth yet, they have starved me and abused me the entire pregnancy and it's all over my channel. So let me go ahead and just go into more details. So they had somebody say that I could not come to Cynthia's home once I denied the woman allowing me to come to New Orleans. And I know why they hurried up and said that I have that they have a restraining order against me once I decided once I said I was not gonna leave the state. Because they're trying to cover up anything that they have done to him. They're trying to stop me from talking to him. They know my son can talk now and they know that I got a right to have my child from this woman from the jump. I shouldn't even have been arrested for protecting myself with the evidence of what Austin was actually doing and how many people were in conspiracy to try to have him abusing me in my home for my things, for my home. He was trying to have my place and all of my things and did go into my home. He had theft charges and went into my home with his mother and stole everything out of my home after he tore up my home, attacked me and my baby out of prison, ran us out of our house, attacking me while pregnant and then threatened to rape my child child with him baby we got together threatening to rape him because I shot him in the leg and so I was sitting over here and I said well now they're saying they got a restraining order trying to leave me stranded outside like this with a duffel bag which is what they did from the jail which is why I had to go to Atlanta because they were trying to set me up like this out here and deny me into shelters and making me go with black men that were trying to set me up to be murdered trying to starve me and have black women named Bianca Hudson Lily Morris people trying to punch me in my stomach and lie and say that I was never pregnant and you can see the baby moving and I did press charges on these people and they trying to drop the charges and say that I was never pregnant so let's go back into details quickly before this video cuts off so I was sitting here at the 66 and I said well now that Cynthia is threatening to have a restraining order against me I said that's making it seem like I cannot go to her home and see about my child and I said well I at least need to get in the area in Montgomery County Texas where she's threatened to do this and a lot these people to do this to me and where they threaten to molest my son in that area but not go to her home and I said well they're threatening they could try to kill me just for coming in the area they know that I'm pregnant and the baby's still alive and they know they're trying to cover that up because then they, it, it's too many details about them trying to murder me with the baby in me it'll all come together and it'll incriminate them all the way if the baby survives and I know they're trying to harm me in the area because that's where it happened and that's where they took my son and threatened to be molesting him is in Montgomery County, Texas. And I said, well, they're going to try to hurt me, but God gave me the order to come out here regardless of how afraid I have been. And I put the information out already. And that's his mother. I owe it to him because I gave birth to him to be here to protect him. And I have to be in the area because everybody in the area know they threaten to rape my child. So for them to know that I'm in the area, that's good. You need to know that mama is in the area. You just like you, if you steal a bear child or a lion or uh, anybody, you done stole somebody's child and threatened to rape them, and then you scared for the mama to be in the area. And so I said, well, what's more important, my life, my safety, or his? And I said, his safety is more important. And I said, well, let me start setting out to Montgomery County, Texas, and I won't go to her home, but I'll be in the area. And I don't mind people knowing that I'm in the area because I'm his mother and you know you threatened to rape my child and I'm mama and I'm in the area and so I started walking in this direction because my phone was dead and I did not know how to get to uh, Conroe, Texas or Montgomery County, Texas, Magnolia, Texas from this area, but it's about 50 mile walk if I were to walk and I'm not going to walk all the way out there, um, not that far, but I started to just walk to see where I was and when I walked down this street, I saw Bissonette. Now Bissonette is a whole stroll in Texas and the whole stroll is where if they see you walking down Bissonette, they 
automatically uh, can try to say that you're a prostitute. And they just had a woman walking past with a little bitty pasty on to start working uh, from this direction. And I stopped and said, no, I'm not going in that direction towards Bissonette with this duffel bag pregnant like this, knowing that they have already forced me to have sex with black men. They threatened to rape me. Cynthia threatened to make black men rape me for shooting Austin. And he was the only man that I had been intimate with uh, and, and had kids with. And Cynthia have had men forcing me to have sex with them when they denied me into the shelters. And they are trying to paint me out as a prostitute on the streets. And I know that's why they had this woman bring me to this location and then have these people leave me outside right by Bissonette. So I said, oh no, I'm not walking down by Bissonette. And this was during the daytime and my phone was dead. And I didn't really know where I was all the way. And I saw Fondren and Bissonette. And so I walked down here back towards the hotel, walked past and kept walking like, hey, I'm just going to just go away from the Bissonette area. So they're not painting me out as a prostitute on Bissonette. And when I walked all the way down this way, I saw Plaza America's Plaza Sharpstown. And I went inside, got me something to eat, sat down and made videos saying that I had called CPS on her and that I reported everybody that she has involved with this uh, uh, threatening to molest my son and going through courts. And I called the Montgomery County uh, clerk's office and I called the sheriff's office to check to see if I had any warrants because they were trying to threaten me saying that I needed to pay her child support after she threatened to rape my son and begged me not to put Austin on child support while he was in prison and allowed him to come in my home and destroy my property and attack my son and then took my baby while I was in that jail and would not come forward with the evidence and tried to help the Cairo police destroy evidence that I was pregnant, tried to set me up to be murdered, paid people to put a hit out on me in the jail for shooting Austin in self-defense and then got my child and then got people trying to set me up like a drug addict and a prostitute on the streets. So I went on ahead and made a video uh, saying that I had reported this woman and I had called to check to see if I had any warrants so that while I was in that area I can make sure that I was not to be harmed by Montgomery County Police because they're trying to stage arrests. They're trying to find reasons to try to pin anything on me. I don't have a criminal record. I don't have any felonies. I was uh, incarcerated for protecting myself. I was not convicted. I've never been convicted of any crime. I don't have any felonies, misdemeanors, nothing. I'm not charged with anything. And I made sure that I called and checked. And they erased the video that had that information in there. And so um, I charged up my phone. My phone was dead. I sat and charged up my phone in Sharpstown. And they, my videos were not loading in Sharpstown. After my phone uh, loaded up to about, um, charged up to about 100%, I left Sharpstown and went and got me a chicken sandwich at Dairy Queen right here. And I went to this gas station and got a black and mouth. And I've been smoking black and mouths pregnant because they threatened to rape my son and they got me by myself with a duffel bag and took my baby and threatened to rape him and then setting me up outside pregnant and then to kill. They have been trying to kill the baby in me when I was not smoking and that's what caused me to really start smoking a lot once I realized everybody just kept trying to kill the baby and refused to allow me to have anywhere to lay down or anywhere to sleep and this is what they have been doing. So they erased this video. I came showing where they were setting me up at and I said before I leave this this location, I need people to know how they're trying to set me up as his mother, as his mother. And so I, I, I started walking back towards this direction um, coming from the gas station after I left Sharpstown. And I remember God telling me that I needed to tell on this woman that she was lying to FEMA so that she could get a hotel here at the Palace Inn and saying that her roof was torn off of her home in Hurricane Ida and that FEMA did not check it and she said that she was lying to FEMA and that she had not really um that she had not really um, had her roof torn off, but there was also information that I had said about the blood ritual that they're trying to pull on my baby. So the blood ritual that they are trying to perform is trying to have all the blacks 
in the country allow them to lie and say that I was never pregnant in the jail and trying to have my family and the blacks lie. And I mentioned the Sandra Bland case uh, where they had erased videos from Sandra Bland and they have my family set up to have me treated like Sandra Bland or Korean Gaines or Breonna Taylor, but they already set it up for my family to be involved with the murder before I was killed in the jail. So when they were trying to murder me pregnant and lie about the evidence of my case, they already had my family involved to know that they was murdering me while I was in there. And then they had my family set up to lie and try to say that they had took my son from me because I was a prostitute and a drug addict or something, or because I was a mental patient. They had all these lies about what they were going to say happened to me. And they had everybody involved with trying to cover up that I was pregnant. And so for me, like I mentioned this information in the video um, that they had, I have the information all over my channels and they erased videos of Sandra Bland um, telling about how the police were already harassing her. They erased videos of Korean gangs. I had seen online when they had um, killed these women. I went online and looked it up myself and saw these women had already been reporting the whites being racist to them before they killed them. And I have been reporting a lot of information about what these whites have done to me. And they asked, Sandra Bland's family asked them to not do any more investigating, um, anybody to do any more investigating or reporting about what happened to Sandra. And they have my family already abandoning me while they're trying to go through with the murder and acting like they don't have anything to do with it. And it's Illuminati ritual where they make your family move up in the Illuminati if they don't say anything, that they threaten to rape your baby, um, that they took your baby and that your baby daddy threatened to rape him because you shot him in self-defense and that you was pregnant and that they murdered you and they have your family set up to go with the lies and they have your family sitting back hoping that the whites and the blacks or whoever they got involved to murder you just go through with the murder and destroying the evidence about what the case was really about which is why my family is uh, is allowing me to be left outside pregnant with the bag and that's what's going on because they're trying to allow the racist whites and the Illuminati to hurry up and go through with the murder of the baby that I'm carrying uh, and covering up that I need the medical care before the baby dies and also covering up the fact that they took my son and threatened to rape and kill him and they're trying to allow them to pay me out as a bad mother by saying that they could have custody of my son and that's where the ritual comes in for my family to set me up to be murdered because they know that they these people should not have custody of my son and they know that they're setting me up um, by trying to have me and give me marijuana and being that they threatened to rape my child I'll go ahead and tell the truth I'll tell the truth that I did smoke um, the marijuana that the people had that they gave to me after they threatened to rape Melby and denied me medical care and made me have sex with several different black men when I didn't want to and they made me have sex with white men Hispanic all sorts of men that I did not want to have sex with because they would not allow me into the shelters and they left me outside pregnant and hungry um, and the men were basically sexually abusing me um, for my survival and it was a setup and so they're having Austin try to say that the baby is a tumor leaving me outside pregnant and the baby is still alive it's not dead and I carried it for 36 months and it's still alive and they got my family uh, having men to give me drugs um, in Atlanta um, and when I was in Atlanta they were giving me marijuana and God was showing me that my cousin Michelle had something to do with it and that Joseph Overa had something to do with it and God came to Joseph's home and where they threatened to rape my son and he brought jo in the spirit and brought Joseph pounds of marijuana that they had had people giving me from Texas and Atlanta as, since they threatened to rape my son and gave the marijuana to him and said where is my son because I don't want the drugs I did the marijuana to try to cope with the abuse um, but 
that's something that they use when they murder black women. Uh, God has showed me in the jail that the police were trying to uh, arrest me for a piece of blunt, um, that they would try to arrest me for a piece of blunt and have um, some male stealing my ID, my identification and, cover, and not arrest the right male, um, that they would try to have black men attacking me over my identification in the streets and that they would not tell the truth about the male that was actually attacking me and that's a white male, my baby daddy named Austin John Metter, and that they would not arrest the right person and that they were trying to arrest me for marijuana and I don't have any marijuana and the woman tried to give me marijuana from the most tell and I told her that I could not take the marijuana and I left without the marijuana and I've been smoking the black and mouse. Um